Hello, this video is about the understanding of CAN hardware. Please find the description box to join our WhatsApp group and to get the premium tutorials on CAN. So first we are dealing about the CAN in hardware in the loop. As explained in the previous video, this is the internal structure of how the CAN is being used in hardware in the loop. So here, as shown previously, the ECU is connected to a CAN case and then to a virtual plant. So this is how the messages are transmitted from the ECU to the virtual plant and from virtual plant back to the ECU through a CAN case. This is what exactly happens in the hardware in the loop. So now when we are dealing with hardware in the loop representing CAN, we need to know about the internal structure of a CAN case. So the next slide is about the internal structure of a CAN case where a CAN case is connected to another CAN case by means of two wires. One is connected from the CAN case. One wire connects from the ECU to PC and the one will be returning the messages from PC to ECU. And this is the CAN case hardware that you are viewing. So the next one will be the internal structure of CAN case. This internal structure of CAN case will represent all the components which are being used in a CAN case. So this is the internal structure of CAN case where a CAN bus is used and a bus interface, CAN protocol controller, acceptance filtering, status and control registers, transmit, receive buffers and the host interface. This is the main CAN case block through which the messages are transmitted from ECU to the PC. And this is the host CPU and the message flow will be the ECU through the CAN case. It goes to the host PCU and this is the flow of request from the ECU to the host PC. When the request is all processed, the response is sent through the same CAN case in the reverse manner. So the message passing will be vice versa. The, when we know about the internal working of CAN, it will be more easy for us to work with CAN. So this is the internal hardware components which are being used in CAN. So now when we are talking about the CAN bus, CAN bus is just a long wire which is used to transmit the analog message from ECU to the host CPU. So now and then the uh, CAN bus interface. Then next will be the CAN protocol controller. Actually what the CAN protocol controller does is CAN trans receiver serves as the interface to the physical CAN bus. So this forms this forms a complete CAN solution. So this can be directly connected to a microcontroller. And the next one is about the acceptance filtering. So acceptance filtering, why we go in for acceptance filtering is that this is the most significant feature of a CAN protocol controller. So a CAN implementation uses acceptance filters to relieve microcontrollers from the task of filtering the required message from the unwanted ones. So acceptance filtering, when we know about, when we just talk about filters, what comes to our mind is that so when the message is passed, there may be a risk of data loss, which we commonly call as errors. In order to avoid this data loss, we use acceptance filters. And after the acceptance filtering is done, the message passes through the status or control registers. Now the status or control registers, these are used. So the, main, the status or control registers are used as the storage devices, they, they store the messages which are sent by the machines. So this works on the concept of using comparison of flags. So what is comparison of flags is that the flags which we are commonly known are carry flag, overflow and zero usually. So this is used to decide the if then instructions related to the decision flow. And finally the message passes through the transmit and receive buffers. Transmit and receive buffers are used to send data packets which helps to increase the performance of the outgoing network traffic. So when the message is passed through these buffers, the trafficking of data is more much reduced. 
thus improving the performance of the entire CAN case. And then the message passes through the host interface and then it is given to the CPU. This is how the request flow works from the ECU to the host CPU. Once the message is processed, it is sent back to the CPU as the response. So if you like this video, please hit on the like button and share, subscribe for more interesting updates on CAN.